So before that, uh, we have two sessions. One session is maybe for one hour, 45 minutes or two hours, where uh, Professor Paul will be, in a sense, is the trying to consolidate all our discussions, all our suggestions, also want some more suggestions from us and he will organize that first session. See, because this is in a sense, this is a document, I may call it as a SEMCO document on guidelines for quality assurance of OER. See, this is the, in a sense, as you know earlier, UNESCO and COL has developed guidelines for OER in higher education. Some time back they have developed it. Yeah, and UNESCO and COL also has developed a basic guide to OER also. This document is a sort, in a way, is a complementing those two documents also and taking forward with a particular focus on quality assurance. They have already two documents they have developed. This is a continuation of that exercise. This is a focus on quality assurance. That's why the document may be titled, this one suggestion for Paul also. It is a SEMCA guidelines for quality assurance of OER. It is something like that. You, see, you can you can think of it or any other suggestions also. Friends are welcome to give any other suggestions also. So now I request uh, Professor Paul to uh, engage as uh, for one hour 45 minutes and we have. And afterwards, the second post session, the 30 minutes around 30 or 45 minutes, uh, particularly we want, all of us I think can reflect also, particularly colleagues from the this university after two days or three days of these discussions, what do you think you can take from this uh, workshop and what type of OER activity you can engage in future in your institution? Suppose you see we have a lot of discussions about all those things, uh, maybe probably you can reflect on that also and other colleagues are here from other institutions and experts are here, they can also respond to yours if you have any specific further clarification to seek, how to take forward in your own institution, this experience of this discussion and these observations and these comments, these uh, suggestions, how you can take forward these things in your institution. That is the post T session. I expect uh, colleagues from uh, university to take more active part and uh, come out with your own observations on that. Uh, and Paul can comment and Professor Mohan can comment and other friends can comment on that also. I think this is okay. Professor yes. Paul, you yes. can take over now group suggested something like A, B, C, D, authenticity, brevity. And I was thinking about this last night while turning over in my bed thinking, you know, we are thinking of having a glossary at the beginning. And I think we need to make a perhaps a larger glossary of what we are meaning, the words, the vocabulary that are specific to OER rather than other types of educational resources. So I think this is a good idea to have an alphabetical little dictionary of OER language. And I think this thing will be a good good way to go forward. So thank you for that. It's, it didn't go over my head, but I thought I, I'll try and bring that in. So I do want to keep in mind that if you do go to You've probably got my URL website address already. And if you do go to sitemap.pdf, you will get this document which shows an image. And you will get all the URLs of every document, PDF, PPT. So they are open. And you are welcome. Secondly, there it, I have compiled from all the different reports I'm writing a list of references, literature references. Some of you want to read something about someone mentioned one paper or UNESCO file or something. And I have prepared, it's, it's now 20 pages or so of literature references together with the URL. So any of the papers very relevant to OER quality, you can list. That's under references.pdf. But it's worthwhile you knowing that they're all collated there. And I will go through the presentations and pull in more references. And, and this will be an ongoing resource of literature references on OER for you, well, for everyone. 
Ha, huh. next. <laughs> if you do not have your feedback form or you've left it or eaten breakfast on it or something, please just ask, get another copy of it. And I was just talking earlier, I've got so many different reports coming back to me now. Oh, this was very good, or this was interesting, or that was fun, or that was nice, and this is good. Now, when my students give me that kind of feedback, I tell them that I think they are on drugs, some ecstasy or something. I want to see, I want to hear the bad points and good points. The bad points are so many. I've, I've, I, my head is full of all the errors. No advanced organizers, no clear plan of what's happening, no models of what we're supposed to do. There are many things you can suggest, and I will listen and get better. So please feel free to write the good points and bad points. The good points makes me go to heaven or something, but the bad points are useful. If you want to delete your name or give another piece of paper, fine. <laughs> so I will collect these gradually. If you forget, email to me. And my email is there somewhere, maybe. <coughs> yes. Now, also, I collected them from yesterday. And I want you to know that these are not my private property. They belong to you. So I've digitized them, made a digital copy of them. It's available on this laptop. You can get copies of it. If you want to change yours, fine. If you want to look at some of the others, it's fine. They belong to you. So don't think that, oh, Paul's got it or Paul's lost it. They're in the public domain. They're on the laptop and they're here. Ah, so. What my plan was today was to, you can see digital feedback here. That contains all your comments. Most of them are in English. So the PowerPoint on other frameworks is not prepared, but you should really take a look at there are 10 different other frameworks considered. For example, this one suggests fourth criteria. Others consider five criteria, seven criteria eight criteria, and there's a short in introduction to them and a critique, and there are the literature references of the originals, and I have included them in online and in a folder here, and a folder here freely for you. If you want to look at Appendix 1, you can go to here. Um, we're probably not on the internet, so let's, let's, let's forget that idea. But they are there. And OK, thanks. For example, too much. And they are also numbered, headed, numbered, and sub-numbered for you. Oh, that's a Word document, sorry. And they are headed, numbered, and 
categorized for you. So I've uniformatized all these. When we go to the literature, it just seems intractable. But I've tried to go through, pull out the main headings, the subheadings, and the explanations, and numbered it, put them into tables, and you can put these side by side and have a look at. So that covers the others. There's 10 frameworks there. That there may well be 20 frameworks by next week. So you're welcome to return and look at the developments and hopefully improvements. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you can give me 10 minutes of a little type of indulgence, my teachers always used to say to me, Paul, talking and talking and text and reading is one way, but please show me this idea of I'll remember it. So I produce my own OER, and this is, doesn't look so beautiful here, but there's, I produce, for example, notes about this unit, and it gives all the links, and it gives some extra examples. This is like teacher's notes, or saying, this is just about the prepositions in English. Something that you think may be very simple, but maybe you make some mistakes. So, for example, when I went to Japan, they said, oh, the meeting is a Kayobi Kara or Sanji Kara. Kara means from. I think, I know what from means. I learned that at school. So, from three o'clock. But it's not true. They mean at three o'clock, not from three o'clock. In German, ich bin zu Haus. Zu means two. I know what two means. But in German, two means at. At home. Ich bin zu Haus. So, two in German means from in Japanese. People say when you can understand the prepositions of a language, you understand their culture. Even avec, I learnt at school, it means with. <laughs> French people say, no, we mean it for. <laughs> so, there are some differences and there is a reason for this. So, those are notes to yeah. stimulate the teacher why this is useful. And the student notes I've included that can be printed out, printed out, worked on offline, and the examples to take away as printable. And there are teacher notes, which includes each PowerPoint and the English language text that can be spoken. I've separated the code and the content. This was 2006, by the way. I started preparing it in 2003. That if you want to present this in Urdu, these are the words you can translate, and you can add your voice to these PowerPoints. The PowerPoint are silent. I think we've discussed that PowerPoint should be without voice. <coughs> Movie, there are... In three or four different versions for Windows Movie, MPG, lots of different versions of it, the teacher notes, and HTML versions, and let's just see what happens. I'm not sure if this will work, but let's try. This is what the student would do. Can you see? Is it full screen enough?
and the teacher can talk in a native language. Here's a present to you, a present for you. Which do you prefer? I prefer for me, or I prefer to me. Oh, really? This is very interesting to me. What? Is it interesting for me? What's the difference? And when would you use to me or for me? Exactly. In Japan, I would add the local context. I got on the bus in the village, wanting the bus for Yamaoto Machi Made to, Yam to my home, and it comes from Yamaoto Machi, U turn, and goes back. So, Kono bus wa Yamaoto Machi Kara or Yamaoto Machi Made. He said, Hi, Yamaoto Machi no of. I thought, I know it's of, it's Niju Goban, but I want to know is it going to or from? So anyway, we can put these things, bus, London, on three dimensions, to, from, for, and there are then three dimensions, and time, because a train comes in to Fukuoka City, after one second it says from, the same train, same place, the preposition suddenly change in time. So let's make time only as a one dimension, not four dimensions. It's too difficult. One dimension time. I am tired. Ima nemtai. That's present tense. Golf is anything. So I've got this. And I'm asking the students interactively, what's the, how many are there? What's the next one? And they're saying at or after or something but it is with. And there are only six. The other prepositions, during, after, are quite different functions. So let's make a line along the time scale, time t, and let's make time now somewhere. And we've got, I am tired, imanemtai, t. And we've got golf, g. And you can add this voice, it's written down there, the teacher can put it into any language. So now I am tired, T. And you've got golf, G. Now on a straight line, there are only six positions. You know? Golf is very far before, golf is yesterday, now, soon, later, or maybe never. So we can call those A, B, C, D, E, F. And let's just go back to the text we were looking at. I am tired now. Golf is soon or just happened. Of, mm, from, mm, And we can label these. This is an automatic video, by the way. <laughs> I just tied all the PowerPoint onto each other. And we've got the six positions. And is two means golf is just at B position? Tiredness is in the middle, isn't it? And of is, is that at the same time as golf? Ah, I'm asking this question. So I use this to say textbook, this sort of note paper image. Yes, you've got A, B, C, D, F, one, two, three, four, five, six, match them together. And I say to students, stop the video here, pause, you can see we're in the middle. Please decide one, two, three. This is either three, two, six, five, one, four. No, 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 six, four. And everyone has a different idea. This is a little long here saying stop as an instruction. And I ask the students to actually do that in pairs or look at it in pairs or groups discussion. So this is the answer. 
where tiredness is now, and where is golf? From is easy. I'm from England. Is it connected to India? No. Is it connected? Not connected. England has finished. India is now. I am from England. My car is made by Honda, Honda cars. Do it by yourself, you do. Very, very close to each other, cause and effect. Two, present to you, present for you. Two means reaching, moving, touching. I'm looking for you. Mm, I am looking to you. Kadong, touch. Four is a little different. Four is only a wish. I am looking for you. Maybe I find you because I'm looking for you, but we don't know if there's any connection. And with, I am living in Hyderabad with you, it doesn't mean touching. I was shopping and I saw you, you were with, with someone or with me in the same shop. It does not mean touch. And of means belonging to. If golf, tired. T watching television, golf, oh, oh tennis, oh great. It doesn't mean there is tiredness, and it doesn't mean there is golf. But if golf, then tired. And the order of the prepositions are from, by, with, to, for, of. Now, just to reflect back a little, if someone says this book is interesting to me, it means interest me, I got it, I read it. It's interesting for me, mm, I will buy it tomorrow. A letter to you, thank you. A letter for you, oh please. They are different. A shuttle bus to the airport, to the airport is non-stop. For the airport, I can get off halfway. I ask the students to bring in their own examples, their own contexts, and I just give you some, give the students some examples with that book of plastic, from oil, of paper, from trees, by me. And they can share them in groups or discussions. And there is some final sort of in-class practice that the teacher could collect and grade that if we think about internationalization wow if we think about Japan oh so much but what about the little words it's the little words that control everything sumo wrestlers in New York is that by Japan or for Japan or from Japan or with Japan Four by four Toyota cars in Africa. Is that from or to or by? Exactly. And then read your paragraph about Toyotas in Africa and see if people can guess your title. Oh, by. Okay, correct. Your English was good.
So that is something I prepared, well, in 2003, 2004, I put it online 2006, where it's got the students' printable notes, the teachers' notes, you can translate it to different things. I've got a folder there of all the images I use, and you can change the images to local context if you wish. And I think the video is self-explanatory, doesn't need voice, doesn't need music or text. So, again, if you do have any comments like there's something missing from this, then I'm happy to revise it. And, but I haven't, honestly, I haven't looked at it for eight years. But I've been busy producing lots of these on different points. And I think... Understanding, for example, English language teaching. This chunk can be used for master's thesis, right? PhDs writing their thesis. The change in color of the bones, no, the disease of the bones in the patient. They cannot use the basic prepositions. So this can be used in any discipline. That is one of the quality criteria we're looking at. That it's not just for teaching someone basic primary school English. It can be used in nanophysics, thesis writing, study skills. It can be used in technology. It could be used in lots of different places. Okay? Anyway, I thought I'd just show that because it's just a showcase of what an OER could look like as an example, as a model, rather than talking, talking about these difficult words. Okay. We're doing still okay for time. So, there's only two, a summary PowerPoint I've, I will look at, and also I just mentioned this because several UNESCO and some very famous people were talking about trust is important. When we download a thing from the website, can we trust the quality? Okay, it's got an Oxford University